You know, I heard you say that we're, we're going along with standard therapy and along came this drug, whoa, game changer. And then couldn't possibly change better, it did. And then couldn't possibly change better, it did. What is your view on the, the way the landscape of treating this disease is going? Where are we gonna be in 10 years? Um, well, um, I think we'll have biosimilars for the things we have now. Um, patients like pills, they don't like shots. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll get to the point, somebody will develop a ROAR gamma T inhibitor that mm -hmm. inhibits the IL-23, IL-17 pathway um, with an oral a small molecule that doesn't have a lot of side effects. So you come up with that, that would be a game changer. Yeah, I think that uh, certainly there's a lot of medical need for oral medications that are highly effective, but as well tolerated as safe as some of the injectable medications are. That's certainly a place we'll go. Uh, I think as the research unfolds, we're gonna try and better understand of you know, treating disease a little bit earlier, will bend their comorbidity curve, will lower their rate of, of progressing to more severe disease over time. Uh, that's also a place where I hope we'll have more information. And is step therapy gonna go away? Going to go right to these biologics. Um, that's that's unlikely. I, I think what what we do need um, from some sort of a payer provider partnership is it, uh, compliance adherence, mm -hmm. because if if these medications are that good and they are that effective, which it certainly sounds like they are, if they're not taking their medication, they're not going to get the benefit. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You know, in the time we have left, why don't I give each of you just a moment to to say something pithy, something we'd like our audience to to take away from this discussion. Why don't we start right here? I don't want to ruin what Joel might have to say. But <laughs> it's I, always I, hard I would being say, on this side. I would say for the patient who has moderate to severe psoriasis, uh, you can not have a monobiologic at all if you can get them under control with light therapy. And so, unfortunately, coming to our office is, is, is very inconvenient, costly to patients and stuff. Just get them a home light unit. If you gave them a home light, if, they, if you got a prescription for biology, you said, here's a home light unit. Use this for three months. If it didn't work for anybody, you still save money mm -hmm. because you've kept the patient off biologics for three months. <laughs> Go ahead, so, so I think that there, there are obviously a lot of new opportunities in this space to really improve patient outcomes and patient care. I, I think insurers are, are are, believe it or not, interested in helping people get to a higher level of health, a higher level of care, but we need, we, we need strong society guidelines, mm -hmm. and we also need the help of the provider community to really uh, ensure people are getting the care that they need. Yeah. You've got the last uh, word. I think we have to think more holistically about our patients with psoriasis, uh, try and improve outcomes not just in their skin, but beyond the skin, their joints, their cardiometabolic diseases, their, their mental health well-being. Uh, that often takes a team approach uh, organ, organ, organizational approach, uh, working with their payers as well. You know, um, the National Psoriasis Foundation is another good resource that payers, patients, doctors can make use of. Mm -hmm. I want to thank all of you for being here. What a great discussion. And on behalf of our panel, I want to thank all of you out there for joining us. Hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative. I'm Dr. Peter Salgo, and I'll see you next time.